Okay, so Shalom Wong. Shalom Wong. First off, I'd like to say, call hello. Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah Ba'ashim, Ka'udash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught us this truth. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect, to all the believers that's uh, waking up. Shalom on to you as well. Uh, just back in another spirit, or back in the spirit with another lesson, rather. Just going into the, the hindering of the Lord's building, you know, by all the heathen. And uh, this is not a new thing, you know. Matter of fact, get Ecclesiastes 1 and 9 now. I'll flip up the order. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Because the scriptures, if I could say this, we always quote Romans 15 and 4. The things which are written aforetime were written for our learning. So we're not facing uh, new dilemmas as far as these heathen trying to uh, offset and hinder the building of the Lord's temple. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You said Ecclesiastes 1. 1 and uh, like around 9 where it says okay. there's no new thing. Okay. Or something this like is uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9. It says, the thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. Uh -huh. And that which is done is that which shall be done. Uh -huh. And there is no new there is no new thing under the sun. Right, and there's no new thing under the sun. So when we see demons like Vocab Malone doing what he's doing, it's like that's a, that's a, that's the same old play that's been ran before. Mm -hmm. So we're in the best position to prepare and just to keep the building. You know, not allowing that to hinder the building, which it ain't gonna stop the hinder or it's not gonna stop the building anyway. Because this building is not of us. It's, up, it's ultimately the Lord's will, right. you know. But go ahead and get uh, Psalms 80, the, the 83rd chapter. It's, it's Psalms chapter 83, verse 1. It says, keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Right, so these are the enemies of the Most High and the enemies of the Most High's people, all of these different heathens, man. You know, they hate to see us doing what we're doing. Israel coming to repentance, waking up to who we are. Because as we wake up to who they are, it's going to bring back to remembrance that they're supposed to be under us, right? Which is all going to be reestablished in the kingdom, man. Mm -hmm. Pursuant to what? Isaiah 2, Micah 4. Go ahead. Verse, verse 3, it says, They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against against thy hidden ones. Right, and this has always been a pretty much a historical legacy of these heathens. Even today, we don't have no representation or no seat in, uh, what is it called? The, uh, UN? Yeah, the UN, the United Nations, you know? And that's not happenstance or by coincidence. Mm -hmm. It's always been like this, man. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 4, it says, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Right. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. They don't want to see us being a nation. They want us to keep identifying with being black, first and foremost. Afro-American, Asiatic, black man. Just all of these different things that don't properly identify the nation of Israel as the Lord's people. They want to cut us off from being a nation. Go ahead. It says, they have said, come, come and let us cut, cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Right. They don't want the name of Israel to be in remembrance anymore, man. You know, go ahead. But they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. Right. So all of these heathens, they've consulted together with one consent. They've formed a confederation against the nation of Israel. You know, in the grand scheme of things, it's all of these other nations, chiefly Esau, Edom, against the nation of Israel, man. Everyone's trying to figure out a play to keep us down from being a nation, even though these other nations between them, themselves, they may not like each other, but they'll come together to, to cast us down. Though. So how much more so when it comes to the, the, the rebuilding of the temple, which the spiritual temple is being rebuilt by brothers repenting and, and coming into this faith? You know, that's it on that. Uh, if somebody can get Amos 9 and 11. This is Amos chapter 9, verse 11. It says, In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. Right. So in that day, and it, we're in the latter days where the tabernacle of David is being reestablished. Go ahead. It says, We fell off. It says that it's fallen. We fell off, but we're, we're being raised back up, man. Right. We're being stirred up to remembrance. Our pure mind is being stirred up to remember, to remember, though we knew these things before, like Peter said. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. It says, in that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen. Right. And close up the breaches thereof. Right. It ain't going to be no, no infighting between the northern and the southern kingdom. 
the scripture says what Judah and Ephraim were oppressed together. But through the spirit of this word going out, the, the prophecy in Ezekiel 30, the 37 chapter, those uh, dry bones are, are waking up to this word. And that stick, those sticks are being joined together as one. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Because we had uh, been all together, you know, as the house of David uh, and since Solomon. Once Solomon uh, died, the kingdom split. You know, the northern kingdom went into the Assyrian captivity and the southern kingdom went into the, uh, the Babylonian captivity. But we're being reestablished through the spirit of this word. Go ahead. It says, and close up the breaches thereof, uh -huh. and I will raise up his ruins, uh -huh. and I will build it as in the days of old. And I will build it as in the days of old. That's the point I want to make. So what's going on right now, we're, it's, 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 we're returning to the days of old, meaning all the tribes coming back together, man, repenting. Identifying who we are as a people, man. And these other nations are having a fit. That's why vocab alone cannot leave us the hell alone, man. Yo, y'all go ahead. Oh, yeah. I yeah, had something to say. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So back like in, in, in the time when the kingdom was not split and it was together, you know, under King David, the heathen, they was in servitude. You know, they were, they were slaves. And, and it's like the same spirits here today. Like, they ain't trying to let that, that kingdom come back into flourishing because they, they know, know it's yeah. over with for them. They man. know they're going to be in slavery to us. Exactly. They exactly. can't pitch up the, them because they think us, we're just niggas. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. A lot of these heathens know what we're preaching is truthful. Yeah. And it, they, they're really in the spirit of fear. Yeah. Vocab is moving in the spirit of fear. He, he hates the thought that he would have to serve us, yeah. that Apostahar is going to have his foot on his neck one day in the kingdom. I said that's why that's why Israel had so much problem with Jeremiah. Right. Because Jeremiah was telling you, we couldn't see ourselves going down to the heathen like that. Right, right, but right. Jeremiah was like, nah, the Lord said we're gonna have to deal with this. Mm -hmm. And you see, so how much more Israel being told by a prophet what the Lord said than these heathen? A whole different thing. Mm -hmm. You see? Matter so, of fact. But you gotta deal with that. That's the spirit, Elder, that you said that. Let's get that. Get Jeremiah 29 and 10. That's the prophecy. Mm -hmm. Somebody get Jeremiah 29 and 10. I got it. It's Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 10. It says, For thus says Yahweh Hashem Shah, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good work. So like, and perform my good word towards you, and causing you to return to this place. Read it again, so like it. Matter of fact, get it since you called it. I got you. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 10. But thus saith Yahweh, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you. Right. And causing you to return to this place. And right now, through that spirit of repentance, we're returning to the Lord. We're returning to the building of the temple, man. Just as in the days before. So this was a prophecy. You know what I'm saying? This is a prophecy. Matter of fact, let's get it because he, he kind of knew where I was going so he can mm -hmm. he can read it. Let's get Ezra's the first chapter mm -hmm. and read from uh, verse one through like three, I believe. Okay. This is Ezra chapter one, verse one. Now, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in the uh, excuse me, that the word of Yahweh by the mouth of Jeremiah mm. might be fulfilled. Right. So it says that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. So. This is that prophecy in Jeremiah being fulfilled during the uh, rule of the Persians through Cyrus. Go ahead. It says, by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. Yahweh stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia. Yahweh, the power of heaven, hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth. And he hath charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is there among you of all his people? His God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of Yahweh, the power of Israel. He is the power. Which right. He, mm -hmm. So, yeah, verse three, that's kind of the point, which this whole chapter is good. But just mm -hmm. for time's sake to get the other precepts, mm -hmm. that's what, as far as I wanted to go. But the point being made, uh, the decree for the Israelites to return to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple, it came through the Persian king Cyrus, which it was really a prophecy of Jeremiah, you know? So uh, we're gonna further expound on that. Let's go to first Ezra, the fifth chapter. And like I said, this whole fifth chapter, really brothers, y'all should read this. Just my 
a humble suggestion. You don't have to, but you'll get a lot of clarity on, on this lesson, even more so than the, just the, the, the quick points that I'm going into, you know. What part first? Uh, first Ezra's five and uh, start at like 63. Like I said, the whole fifth chapter gives you more, of course, but mm -hmm. I just kind of want to hit some some points. And we're going to eat and we're going to just finish the rest of the chapter, actually. Okay. It's first Ezra chapter five, verse 63. Uh -huh. Also, of the priests and Levites and of the chief of their families, the ancients who had seen the former house came to see, excuse me, came to the building of this with weeping and with great crying. Mm -hmm. But many with trumpets and joy shouted with loud voice. Right. So we rejoiced in the fact that we had the opportunity to return to, to, to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. Go ahead. It says, verse 65, in so much that the trumpets might not be heard for the weeping of the people. Weeping and joy, of course. Go ahead. Yet the multitude sounded marvelously so that it was heard afar off. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, when the enemies of the tribe of Judah and Benjamin heard it, mm -hmm. they came to know what the noise of trumpets should mean. Hey, ass heathens, they always on the scene, pocket watching on what the hell we got going on. They don't like to see us happy, rejoicing nope. in our power, nope. you know? Yep. Okay. They always got a problem with it. Mm -hmm. Continue, brother. Excuse me, verse 67. <laughs> And they perceived that they uh, that were of the captivity did build the temple unto Yahweh, the power of Israel. Uh -huh. So they went to Zerubbabel. Right. And Joshua. Jesus. Yeah, that's Joshua. Really Joshua. Yep. Okay, okay, Khan. And I'm, we're going to get that's... that too to, to prove that. Khan. But it's talking about Zerubbabel, which he was the governor, mm -hmm. uh, I believe, in the. Uh, no, Zerubbabel was the governor. Mm -hmm. And then right. Joshua was the, 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 the high priest. Mm -hmm. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, it's in uh, Zechariah. And Zechariah Hosea. and in Haggai. Hey, Haggai. We're going to get both of those later, too. Okay. You beat me to the point of this <laughs> It says... Uh, the studies. It says, <laughs> and, and to the chief of the families, and said unto them, we, <laughs> we will build together with you. Read verse 68 again, Bob. Kishan. 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 Somebody hold uh, St. John 4 and 22. This is uh, 1 Ezra chapter 5, verse 68. So they went to Zerubbabel and Joshua... And to the chief of the families mm -hmm. and said unto them, we will build together with you. So they're talking about we will build together with you. Matter of fact, um, John, what, 369, so like you, brother. Mm -hmm. uh, first Ezra chapter 5, verse 69. For we likewise as ye do obey your Lord. Right. For we likewise as you do obey your Lord. This is heathens. I believe these are the Samaritans mm -hmm. that came to us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Talking about they wanted to build with us. Go ahead. And do sacrifice unto him from the days of Asbareth, the king of Assyri of the Assyrians, who brought us who brought us hither. Right. So they yeah, were probably. in captivity under the Assyrians as well. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it goes into that in Isaiah, I believe. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and get Saint John four and twenty two just to back up. Cause they talking about we obey your power just as you do. Man. Really. Yeah, As a heathen, go ahead. It wasn't committed. It wasn't given to them. You know, all of the promises and the laws and the customs. You know, right? But they over there thinking that just like to the so-called Jays today mm -hmm. think that they, you know, or want to convince the world that they are, the, you know, the, the, the true chosen seed, just because they look like they're, you know, keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments. Really, they're the most biggest hypocrites out there, man. That's right. right. If I could say that, because the Assyrian king put them there to try to trip things up. Yo. <laughs> So, yeah. But 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 if that's the case, then why was it necessary for them to bring back the Levites so that they so that they could uh, uh, continue to practice the law? They didn't know the law, statutes, and commandments. You know, but they you know they during that time they brought those Levites back into the land, a portion of them to be priests over the you know various cities, so that you know it could be it could still you know it's a certain, basically the the the. Um, the uh, manners that were being carried out in the land could continue. Right. You no. Know? Exactly right. And Lord didn't want them to either because when he put them over, when he put those heathen over there, when we went to Babylon, they got ate up by lions. Right. right. That's why they sent them back in there. Exactly. Because <laughs> we study, man. They they can uh, go into wars and fighting and constantly, so they didn't got peace in Israel just like back then. Right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right, brother. 
But I want to just uh, quote something that Yahweh Shah said if somebody had that St. John 422. Just to back up verse 69 that he had just read. Mm -hmm. This is St. John chapter 4, verse 22. It says, Ye worship, ye know not what. And he's talking to the Samaritan woman mm -hmm. right. in this verse. So that's just the spirit. Read it again. It says, St. John 4 and 22. Ye worship, ye know not what. Right. We know what we worship. Uh huh. For salvation is of the Jews. Right. For salvation is of the Jews. These heathen don't know what they worship right. because it wasn't given to them the oracles of the Most High. And the worship, the things that uh, Paul talked about in Romans, the ninth chapter, the service of the Most High, you know, it wasn't given into no heathen, man. That's why we don't want y'all building with us, man. We don't want y'all help. Just let us build, man. I have a quick priest. Sir. Go ahead, priest. Hey, uh, Second Kings. Uh, I said on that. Second Kings seventeen, and uh, I started uh, twenty-two. For the children of Israel walk in the sins of Jeroboam. Which he did that departed not from them until Yahweh removed his Israel out of his sight. And he had said by all the servants of the prophets, so was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria until this day. And the king of Assyria brought man from Babylon and from uh, Kathah and from Ava and from Hamath and from uh, Sepharim and, and Placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel, and they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the city thereof. It's going back to what the priests were bringing out. You know, those Samarians was 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 placing that land, but they were actually taught the ways of the ways of uh, you know what I'm saying Israel. Mm -hmm. But you know, the house shot broke it down. They told them like, you ain't got nothing to do with this, man. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Yo. Because we was always dwelling, the heathen were always around about us, man. You know? Any other precepts? You got something? Okay, uh, let's go back to uh first Ezra 5 and 69. Okay. This is back in uh first Ezra chapter 5 and 69. It says, For we likewise, as ye do obey your Lord and do sacrifice <clears throat> unto him from the days of Asbareth, the king of the Assyrians, who brought us hither. <laughs> then Zerubbabel and Joshua and the chief of the families of Israel said unto them, it is not for uh, it is not for us and you to build together and house unto Yahweh our power. So they told him straight up, man, this ain't got nothing to do with y'all, man. Yeah. This is family business. Yeah. Go ahead. Because they try to say it was, you know, if I may add. No, um, so they try to say, you know, we go back to, you know, 200 years ago when, you know, when the Assyrians was in power before the Babylonians. And they brought us, you know, we was, we was in there, we was in the, in, in the land doing our thing too. But <laughs> at, at that point, we were already in the land for over a thousand years, you know, well over that. So, you know, like the brother said, he said, it's not for us and you, which means it's not, it's not our, it's not, we're not, we're not be able to mix together. To be able to, uh, to to build what's originally belonged to us, you know. So show you, man, that the, the heathen don't have any say so in, in, in building this spiritual temple which we building now. They always trying to slide in there some type of way, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Trying to weasel in there. You tell them they can't come, they get mad. Right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it is. It's an exclusive party, and you can't come. Yeah. Right. So I want to say it said our it said our forefathers was building with tools to build a temple and. Weapons mm -hmm. to defend from the heathen, man. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are. That's exactly what we are, yo. Okay. That's exactly what and we are. And it also prophesied that we win. That's mm -hmm. right. Jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Because okay. this building, like I said earlier, is not up to us. I'm going to get some scriptures to prove that. Mm -hmm. it's, this is the most highest uh, building at the end of the day, man. Which the building, it really represents the body because you got them damn rats talking about building the third temple. That shit going to be destroyed, man. You know, which matter of fact, somebody get just to prove that point, First Corinthians three and sixteen, because it's really talking about the body of believers that are from the bloodline of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Israelites, not no heathens, man. You're not a part of the body. You're not a part of the building. First Corinthians. Mm-hmm. First Corinthians three and sixteen. This is First Corinthians three and sixteen. It says. Know ye not that ye are the temple of Yahweh, uh -huh. and that the spirit of Yahweh dwelleth in you? Right, that the spirit of Yahweh dwelleth in us, which the spirit is this word, man. The law, statutes, and commandments, which was only given to Israel. 
Go ahead. Stop. It says, uh, stop. like it says, verse 17. Okay. If any man uh, defile the temple of Yahweh, he him shall Yahweh destroy, for the temple of Yahweh is holy, which temple ye are. Right, so uh, we are the temple of the Most High, meaning his people. Go ahead. It's uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. Right, right. It says, To whom coming as unto a, live, a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of Yahweh and precious, mm. ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house mm. and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. To offer up spiritual sacrifices because that's what we're doing in the building process. We altars, the brothers, the different counts put you in this word. We're making those continual praises, those continual sacrifices until Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Yeah, and those carnal sacrifices ain't going to get it. Right, exactly. Yeah, I want to say just love in Jesus, they believe that's a sacrifice. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But being that lively stone built up elect and precious is a whole different ballgame. Right. You know, and you got to be able to understand the difference, uh, the difference between both. Right. You know, and it's all through the spirit, Con, which right. since we on kind of this train of thought with this lesson, <clears throat> let's get uh, Ephesians, the second chapter mm -hmm. and start at 19, read 19 through 22. Hey, uh, I can say and that letter was written to the Israelites that was scattered. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Uh, that's a family of people that were scattered. Right. Which we were always scattered among the heathen. Mm -hmm. You know? Yep. You said Ephesians 2? Yeah, Ephesians 2, 19 through 22, I believe. God. This is Ephesians chapter 2. Yep. Verse 19. It says, and uh, I'll start at verse, yeah, excuse me. Ephesians 2 and 19. It says, and now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, mm -hmm. but fellow citizens with the saints. Backing up, that's the spirit. Backing up what you just said. We are no more strangers and foreigners, man. Yeah. Because we were always dwelling among the heathen, you know? Mm -hmm. The Israelites who lost their heritage and customs, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Right. Today, yep. <clears throat> now that the word is going out, we're no more strangers and foreigners. Go ahead. Time. It says, uh, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of the Most High. And fellow citizens with the saints, which the saints are Israelites. Mm -hmm. And it says, in the household of the Most High. Go ahead. Verse 20. And are built... Upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, mm -hmm. Yahweh Shai Mashiach himself being the chief cornerstone. Right, Yahweh Shai himself being the chief cornerstone of the house, which Yahweh Shai, he's the word. Mm -hmm. Which the word, that's the chief cornerstone of what we're building right now to make those continual sacrifices. <clears throat> Let him finish and then I got you. Unless it's directly back what, it up what he just. Go, go ahead, go ahead, brother. Uh, I'm going to cut off the spirit. The Shai, the cornerstone, you got uh, it, yeah. This is Psalms 118. And uh, 22, it says, the stone which the builders refused has become the head stone of the corner. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, yep. Kind of, kind of. Hey, Isaiah, uh, Isaiah uh, Hosea uh, 9 and 17. My power will cast them away because they did not hearken unto him, and they shall be wanderers among the heathens. Mm. Yeah. That's absolutely right. We should be wanderers among the heathens, man. And the heathen's mad because we have recognized who we truly are now, man. We're moving with intention, with purpose right now. And they're trying to hinder the purpose. Which really is the purpose of the Heavenly Father. It's not even our purpose, man. We're just being used as uh, lively stones in the building process. To offer up those continual uh, sacrifices. <coughs> Go ahead, Ak. Uh, going back to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 21. It says, In whom all the building... Fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, mm -hmm. in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of the Most High through the Spirit. Right, so all through the Spirit, mm. we're building together in habitation of the Lord, man. You know, where two or three are gathered, the Lord shall dwell in the midst of them. I'm loosely paraphrasing that yep. scripture. Yep. You know, so we don't need an actual physical building. Mm -hmm. That's why Yahweh Shah said that the kingdom of heaven is within you, really. Mm. You know? So Damn. all through the spirit of this word going out, we're building. Right. Brothers putting up these videos, edifying, you know, more believers coming into the faith, repenting. Mm -hmm. That's all a part of that building. And more brothers coming together, offering up those continual sacrifices, mm -hmm. which we make our bodies a living sacrifice. Right. That shows that our bodies are part of the actual building. That's right. Okay, that's it on that. Unless anybody had a precept, we can go back to uh, 1 Ezra mm -hmm. 5 and... 
the last couple of verses. I, I, I got one. I just want Go ahead, to brother. read just for the listeners. This is Isaiah chapter 40, verse 17. It says, All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. So most I was talking to these other nations, telling them that they ain't worth anything compared to the Israelites. And that's just, you know, reading for the camera's sake. Okay. Going back to uh, First Ezra chapter five and uh, let me see seventy. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, I'll read verse seventy again. First Ezra five and seventy. Then Zerubbabel and Joshua and the chief of the families of Israel said unto them, It is not for us and you to build together in house unto the Lord mm -hmm. our power. We ourselves alone will build unto the power of Israel. And them heathens hate being excluded, man. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, uh, vocab alone, he's big man right now, man. Mm -hmm. That's you know? what you know he's a heathen. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, what that's what exactly what shows that he's a heathen because he's having the same spirit. He's coming in the same spirit as heathens back then. Right. He's big mad, bro. Mm -hmm. he, ha he thinks he has a stake or a part in, in what we got going with the Heavenly Father, in our covenant up with the Heavenly Father. God. You know? God. Go ahead. It says, uh, let me see, verse 71, we ourselves alone will build unto Yahweh of Israel, according as Cyrus, the king of the Persians, hath commanded us. Which we read that in Ezra, the first chapter. Go ahead. But the heathen of the land, lying heavy upon the inhabitants of Judea, and holding them straight, hindered their building. Hindered the building, man. And that's what's happening today. But whatever they're doing, it's not going to hinder the building. It's not going to stop a goddamn thing, man. Right. You know, go ahead. Right. It says, uh, and they are, uh, excuse me, and by their secret plan, <laughs> and by their secret plots and popular persuasions and commotions, right. they hindered the finishing of the building all the time that King Cyrus lived. So they were hindered from building for the space of two years until the reign of Darius. So at that time, they did actually hinder the building for, like you just said, a space of two years. So until the time that Cyrus died to where Darius came into power and it backs this up. Now we can get Ezra. You call Ezra four? No, I got you, Isaiah forty and seven. But I want to get Ezra because some one of y'all said Ezra four earlier. I think you did. You did. Say you Ezra did say Ezra. 4. Oh, Ezra four. Yeah. 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 If you want to get it, get Ezra four and four. Yeah. And, and can I add to to uh, the the last precept, the last verse right there? It says they hindered the building for two years, but that was remember that was a physical temple that was being built. Right. You can't hinder a spiritual temple. Exactly. They trying. Boy. They trying. They trying. <laughs> you know. <laughs> they trying. Yeah, you can't blow up a spiritual temple, man. Man, I was talking about where it said the same thing that I mean, first answer said. Okay. Yeah. Well, it, it do, but yeah, it, oh, it, 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 I, I still want to read it because it's going to kind of back up that last verse. It right. says that they hindered it for a space of two years mm -hmm. until Cyrus died, until the time that Darius came into power. You want to start at the top? Uh, first Ezra 4, and start at verse 4, actually. All right. This is Ezra chapter 4, verse 4. It says, then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building mm -hmm. and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose. And hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose, man. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, it's a hired counselor. Ex <clears throat> man, exactly. You ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Read that again, Agents. brother. Agents. Uh, Ezra chapter 4. Agent Riser, yeah. Yeah, Agent Riser. <laughs> Which that's the <laughs> Amalekite name, man. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Ezra chapter 4, verse 4. It says, Then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose. All the days of Cyrus king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius king of Persia. Right, so that just backs up that last uh, verse that we read in 1 Ezra, uh, the fifth chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. Go ahead. It says, and in the reign of Ahasuerus, in the beginning of his reign, wrote they unto him an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. So from 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 even a change of rulership in the Persian Empire, they just kept hindering the building, man. But of course this, the, the temple is spiritual, so they ain't gonna be able to hinder it this time. They can try, yeah. but it's not gonna work. You know? So I just want to back up that last verse in uh first Ezra five. Uh let's go to uh So now uh, we're going to go, uh, basically Cyrus died, and then uh, you had the space where pretty much Israel stopped the building. Yeah. Uh, let's get Haggai the first chapter, yep. yep. Somebody hold Zechariah the first chapter. 
Somebody hold Ezra. Ezra, the fifth chapter. I got Ezra. But get Haggai first. Yeah. These are prophecies right here. Kind. This is uh, Haggai. You said Haggai 1, right? Haggai 1. Read verse 1 through 5. Kind. This is Haggai chapter 1, verse 1. In the second year of Darius, the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of Yahweh by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and Joshua, the son of jo uh, Josedek, the high priest, saying... Right, so right there, just to give you context of who Zerubbabel is, it says, Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shithiel, the governor of Judah. Go ahead. It says, the verse 2, Thus speaketh Yahweh of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come. The time that Yahweh's house should be built. Then came the word of Yahweh by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Right, so Haggai was cursing them out because Jake was chilling pretty much at that point. You know, after the, the, uh, uh, the reign of, of Cyrus and where we got hindered for a moment, mm -hmm. Jake just got back to chilling, basically. They weren't focused on the rebuilding of the temple at that point. So Same Haggai thing had thing to basically day. just give him a kick in the ass, man. Like, what are y'all doing, man? Same thing happening today. Same thing happened in the day. Like, we had that period where we was asleep. But all through the spirit, uh, the prophets, the, the apostles that the Most High woke up to preach the truth, we've been kicked back in the ass to get back to building again. Right. You know? Read verse uh, 3 again, Salaki. Come. It says, Then came the word of Yahweh by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? So he was saying, Lay in your sealed houses. Jake, like, chill, man. Go ahead. Now, therefore, Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, consider your ways. Right, so that's the first step to repenting too, is considering your ways, man. You know? And of course, we always go into that scripture, you sown in much, bring in little. God. But this is what he was really talking about. He was cursing Jake out to get him, to compel him to restart the building. Right. So that was a prophecy. Uh, right. Let's go to Zechariah, the first chapter. And we can read those first four verses in that. So now we're we're in the uh, in the rule of, of Darius, king of Persia. Now, mm -hmm. yep, this is uh, Zechariah one and one. In the eighth month, in the second year of Darius, came the word of Yahweh unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Iddo, the prophet, saying, Yahweh hath been sore displeased with your fathers. Right, and the reason he was sore displeased with our fathers, just like Haggai, had to curse him out. We were just in our sealed houses, just chilling. We we weren't um, in the, on fire in the spirit to, to, to rebuild the temple. Go ahead. Verse 3. Therefore say thou unto them, thus saith Yahweh of hosts, turn ye unto me, saith Yahweh of hosts, and I will turn unto you, saith Yahweh of hosts. Be ye not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, thus saith Yahweh of hosts. Turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doings. But they did not hear nor hearken unto me, saith Yahweh. Right. So that's what we're compelling our people through the spirit of us preaching this word, man. man. We're telling my people to, to turn back from your evil doings, man. Repent. Get involved in this building process with us, man. Okay. We're trying to get the hell up out of here, man. <clears throat> you know, we're trying to build as the days before so that the Lord can seal his election and that the Lord can come and deliver his people. And then we can have the heathens in subjection. So the building is important, you know. Uh, let's go to uh, anybody got a precept? If um, not, we can go to uh, Ezra, the fifth chapter. I was going to say, if you go, I mean, Haggai. Yeah, go, whatever you want to bring out, brother. Okay. Like I said, I'm, I'm real quick and, and pointy. Kind, but if kind. it's meat and things you want to bring out, by all means, brother. Kind. Because we read in, I think that was uh, first Ezra, the fifth chapter, where I talk about the individuals who were seen. The temple in its first glory, they had, you know, pretty much were weeping for joy when they saw yep. the, the, I think, the foundation of the temple being laid. Mm -hmm. Well, it goes into that in Haggai, the second chapter, where it says, uh, and if you start at verse 3, uh, Haggai chapter 2, verse 3, who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? Because, you know, there were some Israelites that were still uh, alive, you know, they were, of course, elderly at that point, but they, they may have remembered the temple before Nebuchadnezzar came in and overthrown it. You know, because they were they were the Babylonian Empire overthrew Israel. You know, what I'm saying for about 70 years. So, 
you know, there were still some individuals that were old enough to see it in its first glory. It says, and how... Yeah, and that's the prophecy we read in uh, Jeremiah 29 chapter. Mm, okay, yeah, Khan. Yup, go ahead. Khan, it says, and how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? <laughs> so the Lord is like, look at, look at the temple now. And you think that your work is done? You know what I'm saying? If we look at the, st the state of our nation... Right. Compared to because, you know, we, we weren't alive to see when Israel was in their right mind and all that stuff. But through the scriptures, I mean, us being the prophets, we have the ability to see and get a glimpse of the way that we carried ourselves, the customs, the manner of people that we once were hearing all these, you know, wonderful stories of how we overcame adversity in various situations. You know, we know that we come from a great lineage of people. And so for us to look at the state of it now is comparable to the scripture right here, looking at our people basically like. We're, we're dilapidated, you know, mm -hmm. but being that our people don't know the history, they don't have that thing to compare, you know, that we that we once were kings. You know right. what I mean? Right. Because uh, Jake don't really yeah. truly believe that there are special people. Mm -hmm. Like if we tell our people that they're special. They want everybody else to be included. Right. Instead of being in the spirit of Zerubbabel and Joshua saying, no, nah, y'all don't have we don't want no none of y'all hands. Y'all don't got no part in this. Right. right. You know, uh, I'll read one more verse. That's the will of the Heavenly Father. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's the will of the Heavenly Father for uh, Israel to be separate. Mm -hmm. Like we said last night at camp, even if you want to be wicked and don't believe and all that, the Lord's going to burn your bitch ass up and make you righteous anyway. Man. Mm -hmm. So you still win. Woo. Even though you intentionally doing everything in your power to lose, that ain't the Lord's will. Mm. <laughs> well, you do everything in your power. Oh, the Lord gonna burn you up and start over from scratch, That's and right. you're gonna be righteous whether you like it or not. That's right. But you're gonna make you feel that burn. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. And then after you feel that burn, you're gonna be made righteous. Man. So you still win, even though you heavily intent on losing. Man. The odd people expect to lose. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's why they get so offended at us. That's right. Like, no, nah, nigga, we didn't sign up to lose. Right. No, the Lord said He set aside a, a group that was gonna win. You don't even know about that group. Right. Go ahead. That's why Isaiah said, is Israel a homeborn slave? <laughs> you know? Just born losers, man. We've developed a real slave loser mentality, man. Yeah. It's real. Yeah, yeah. If I could say, that's why it says in Isaiah 30 that our people trust in uh, oppression, yeah. which really is synonymous with the fraud. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that was just like, uh, what was it, a uh, soldier boy? He said, "I want to thank." He said, "I want to thank the white man for slavery because if he wouldn't have put us in slavery, I wouldn't have all this ice." What? <laughs> that was a wild bat, right? That's a yeah. <laughs> That's how long, man. Damn. That's, now that's a loser mentality. It's real. Good. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, um, Haggai chapter two, verse four. It says, "Be now, uh, excuse me. Yet now, be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith Yahweh." And be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest. And be strong, all ye people of the land, saith Yahweh, and work. For I am with you, saith Yahweh of hosts. That's right. So that's the time we in right now. It's time to work, man. We got work to do. Man. We got work to do. You know? Did you want to say something? I didn't mean to cut you, you, you That's the point I wanted to make. That's it, bro. Any other precepts and points? If not, we'll go to Ezra, the fifth chapter. Well, the guy just start just right at the top and read down through verse six. The fifth chapter. The fifth chapter. Okay. Ezra, the fifth chapter. Ezra chapter five, uh, starting at verse one, it says, "Then the prophet uh, Haggai, uh, the prophet, and uh, Zechariah, the son of uh, Iz." You might have to come closer too, because you, you're not speaking very loudly. So just to make sure, because we're recording it. This is Ezra chapter 5, verse 1. It says, Then the prophets uh, Haggai and the prophet uh, and Zechariah, the son of Uz, uh, prophesied unto uh, the, the Jews uh, that were in Judea and Jerusalem in the name of Yahweh by Shemi of, uh, of Israel, even unto them. And we just read those prophecies in both Haggai and Zechariah. Huh. You know, go ahead. It says, Then rose up uh, Zerubbabel, the son of um, Shealtiel, Shealtiel uh, and Joshua, the son of uh, 
Joe Zadak. Yeah. Joe Zadak. Uh, and right, which we know is Ruel's the governor, mm-hmm. and uh, Joshua is the high priest. Go ahead. It says, um, and began to build the house of Yahweh by Shimon Shai, which is at Jerusalem. And uh, with them were the prophets of Yahweh helping them. <laughs> That's right. With them were the prophets of the Most High helping them. Go ahead. Uh, at the same time, because uh, that's, that's uh, starting with Haggai and Zechariah, that, that was basically they were pushing the envelope, so to speak, making Jake get their hands back to the work. That's right. You know, after that period, after Cyrus died, to where Jake was pretty much chilling, probably going off, Man. you know, doing whatever they was doing. Through the prophets came on the scene and, and and compelled our people to get back to the building. It's the same thing today. Through the prophets. That's why this word is going out like at the rate that it's going out at now. You know, it's got all these camps and hyperdrive pushing these uh, videos out, man. Oh, so that ain't no different than when the apostle Paul said, make sure you get your three videos done with. Mm-hmm. That's that kick in the ass to continue building. Yeah. Like, what are y'all what doing? What you for? Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> bro, everything, bro, it all applies. That's exactly and that's, that's, that's the disconnect between all these people that think they know the Bible, man. They think that everything already happened. This right. is a living book. Right. You know what I'm saying? This book still, bro, it's still stuff in Gen- uh, Genesis that haven't happened yet. Right. What the hell you mean the Old Testament done away with? No. These things got to play out. And that's why all these prophecies come in the past. Right. When you go to the history, it match up. When you deal with the present time, it match up. When you look into the future, it match up. Right. So ain't nothing been done away with. You know? This is Ezra 5 and 3. It says, at, at the same time came to them, uh, what's that? Uh, Tatnai. Tatnai, uh, governor uh, on this side of the river. And when you go into that word, or when you go into this guy, Tatnai, the governor on this side of the river, he was the Persian governor in the uh, land of Syria. Go ahead. Uh, and. Uh, so Shethar Bosnai. Ooh, boy, <laughs> yeah, they beast. Yeah, I don't yeah, know if yeah. I'm pronouncing it correct, yeah. but uh, hey. they rough. Uh, hey. <laughs> uh, 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 Shethar Basnai. Shethar Basnai uh, and their companies. And that was pretty much a Persian officer. It said, and said unto, uh, and, and said thus unto them, uh, who hath commanded you to build this house? And to make up this wall. And that's the spirit that vocab along. We gotta keep naming him. He he that's pretty much what he's saying. Who had commanded you yep. to build this house? What authority are you coming in? Right. Right. Yeah. Especially the, the fact that starting with the apostles, we preach with the authority and we hinge on the fact that we got the hundred percent truth as far as the doctrine is concerned, you know. All of these heathens, they feel like, who, who gave you niggas authority to set up these camps and just come in that austere spirit that y'all coming in, man. Who gave y'all authority? Even when the heathens uh, come by just looking at the signs, they checking us out. That's You could kind of feel that that's in their mind, man. Like, who gave you the authority? Even uh, when Mordecai, during the time of Esther, he was always in the gate. Uh, when Haman the aggregate was around, that's the same spirit. Haman was like, man, and he didn't bow to, uh, to Haman. And that's the same spirit we coming in because we know who we are. We know that you heathens are supposed to be in subjection under us, man. God. Right. Go ahead. Uh, verse four. It says, "Then said uh, we unto them after this manner, uh, What are the names of the men that make it this building? But the eyes of their their God. Like it says, but the eye of their God was upon the elders uh, of of the Jews that uh, that." They could not cause them to case. Cease. 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 Or stop. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, uh, till the manor came to Darius. Right. So the Lord was with the building, man. That's why they couldn't hinder it in this, in this particular uh, narrative right here, this passage. Go ahead. It says, and then they returned answer, uh, answer but letters concerning this matter. Right, so they basically tried to report back to Darius who he gave us the decree in the first place to build. Little did they know. You know? 
And that's how these heathens, they, they, they try to do little, little slime ball stuff like that, man. Mm-hmm. Try to go cop us out when really the, the Heavenly Father really gave us the authority. He put the spirit on Darius to allow us to rebuild. Mm-hmm. You know? Go ahead. Ar- Verse 6, it says, the copy of the letter that uh, Tatanai, uh, uh governor on this side of the river and... Yeah. And his companions, uh, yeah, and his or that name, other name, yeah, that other name, uh, Shathar Bosnai, Shathar Bosnai, uh, and and his company, um, uh, the uh, Afarsakites, the Afarsakites, which were on this side of the river, uh, sent unto Darius the king. Right. So verse six, that's pretty much where I want to stop. And if you keep going down, yeah. it's pretty much going into the letter. That this heathen wrote to Darius. Yeah. Talking you know, down. just talking down, you know. When Darius, through the Spirit of the Lord, he the one gave us the decree in the first place. You know? So he thinking that he doing something good, you know, trying to report us. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see what else. That's pretty much the point on that. And really, uh, the fact, I think I now made this point earlier, the third temple that we're building right now is the spiritual temple. So it ain't going to be nothing that these heathens or anybody can do to overthrow what we're doing, you know? Right. So that, that's just like, so like, I didn't mean to cut you off, but mm-hmm. that's just like how with the, with the physical temple, all kind of distractions can come. Right. Yeah. Even with the spiritual temple, all kind of distractions come. Because yeah. what vocab do? He go around trying to sow discord amongst right. the camps. But the elect, it's impossible to fool the elect. Right. The elect is that temple that's being built. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't no way they can touch it. Right. You can't physically touch it. Damn sure you can't spiritually touch it. You see? But just, uh, just like when uh, Vocab went to them dudes in Chicago that fell out. You know what I'm saying? He thought that was gonna he thought that was gonna help him. Right. And it didn't. Because the true believers, those true lively stones, ain't worried about none of that. Just the no guile power. He 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 trying to infringe on the no guile power. Okay. Building and follow the lamb with us wherever he going. That's the third temple. You see? The third temple is the elect. Right. And it says it's impossible to persuade the elect out of outside the truth. They will not be penetrated. Right. And that's the wall that he fighting up against. Right, which it makes the, the, the job more difficult, but Yahweh Shah said that in Matthew the seventh chapter. This is the straight gate. Mm-hmm. If you following him, it's not gonna be easy building, toiling in this truth. That's why it says in what Sirach, the second chapter. Uh, before I come to serve the Lord, prepare our soul for temptations, and that goes into all these heathens, on all these different demonic factions trying to do, uh, trying to hinder the building process. But we know through the Spirit that there's nothing that they can do to ultimately stop it. Right. In fact, somebody get Acts the fifth chapter, the thirty-eighth verse, because this is the will of the Heavenly Father, the spiritual temple that's being rebuilt in these latter days. God. I got like a few more precepts unless y'all had something. Got it. You want to bring something up? No. Okay, whoever got it first can read through it. It's Acts chapter 5, verse 38. It says, And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. Right, refrain from these men and let them alone. Uh, let them alone. And this is a righteous Pharisee, Gamaliel. He's in the midst of uh, uh, the scribes and the Pharisees, you know, who are basically trying to come up against the apostles. You know, because people were believing and coming into the faith, you know. So that was an account to where you had niggas trying to hinder the building because you got Esau setting up things like what Black Lives Matter, all these different movements. These are uh, things or plots that we read right. to try to hinder the building as well. Right. These are hired counselors that he's using to hinder the building as well. Our own people, two thirds, you know, they're going to try to hinder the building also. Go ahead. It says, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. Uh-huh. But if it be of the Most High, ye cannot overthrow it. Right, so if this counsel be of men, if, if what we're building is of men, which the temple of the Lord, it really can't be made by hands. That shows even more that it's a spiritual temple. It's going to be overthrown if it's not of the Most High. But, go ahead, read that again. Uh-huh. It says, but if it be of the most high, it cannot be overthrown. I'm sorry, it's like, but if it be of the most high, you cannot overthrow it. Mm-hmm. 
lest happily ye be found even to fight against the most high. Right, and when you go into that word happily, it means ignorant, man. Yeah. These people don't even consider that they being wicked, man. Right. Hindering the building process, lest happily or ignorantly ye be found to fight against the most high, which that's an unwinnable battle. You're dealing with an entity that's infinity and O, man. It's a like Gamaliel had to see how the people was like. Right. He was drawn to that conclusion. Right. He was like, look, man, just leave him alone, bro, because he right. seen that it wasn't going to stop. He wasn't going to stop. He like, bro, mm -hmm. if, if what they're doing is a man thing, you ain't got to worry about it. Right. But, but since you see that these dudes won't stop, keep fucking around. And he even went into examples about to say elders, <laughs> of like different guys and zealots yeah. and stuff who Dude. can't, yo, do this. Yeah. Keep fucking around. You ain't fighting against the Lord. I mean, you ain't fighting against me. You fighting against the Lord, and you don't even know it. Yeah. Yep. Keep fucking around. You see? That's right. I'm telling you, man. And that's what we telling these. That's what we telling these people through the Spirit. But look, if we just a bunch of niggas, angels is fixed, let us make it. <laughs> I thought Jesus was merciful. Right. Hey, right. You should be done shook the dust. Yeah. You're not already told us we're going to hell. We still gonna <laughs> right. stop. Yeah. So at the end of the day. Either they're going to stop because it's not of the Lord, or it's going to keep on going because it's of the Lord. But either way, it's going to happen. Like it or not, this thing is happening. Right. You know? And Vocab Malone, he, he had read that scripture, obviously, because <laughs> he would leave us the hell alone, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing truly is of men. If we don't got the truth, man, it's going to crumble to pieces, bro. Yep. Right. That's right. right. You had something, bro? Uh, yeah, it's kind of, uh, uh, is, is he done with that? Was yeah. it more? In that? That's, that's it. That's it. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is uh, uh, Nehemiah. Uh, Somebody who Psalms 127. Uh, I'm gonna start at 14. It says, uh, and I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, be not ye afraid of them. Remember Yahweh Shai, which is greater, which is great and terrible. And fight for you, brethren, your sons and your daughters and your wives and your house. Uh, it says in verse 15, and, and it came to pass when our enemies heard that uh, it was known unto us. And Yahweh, by Shimei Amashai, had brought their counsels to naught, uh, that we returned all of us uh, to the wall, every one unto unto his his work, you know, uh, going to you know them going back to start building the uh, the, the temple again. And um, verse sixteen it says, and it came to pass from the time forth that the half of my servants uh, were wrought in the work, uh, and and the other half. Uh, of them held both uh, the spear and shield and the bows uh, and so I can, uh, the Hebrew gun So we still having to defend ourselves, but we're defending ourselves through the word. That's why what in Ephesians, the sixth chapter says, put on the whole armor of the most high. So we have the ultimate defense mechanism to allow us to keep building, you know, but ultimately this is the most highest building. And it's nothing that anybody can do to stop it. Go ahead and get that in Psalms 127. Whoever got it. Just read the first verse in that. 
Psalms 127? Yeah, Psalms 127 in just the first verse. Psalms 127 and 1. Except Yahweh build the house, they labor in vain that build it. <laughs> right. So that's mm -hmm. key to the point. Back it up what Gamaliel said. Read that again. Psalms 121 and 1. Except 127, right? Excuse me, Slocky. 127 and 1. Right, yeah. Except Yahweh build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Right. So except that the Lord, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh shall build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. It says, except Yahweh keep the city. The watchman waketh, but in vain. Right. So except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh, but in vain. And we're the watchman. Another word for watchman is the prophets, man. So the Lord's keeping the city, which the city represents the nation of Israel. So what we're doing, the fact that we're uh, crying, signing crying, you know, steady uh, uh, making that complaint and pleading to the Lord is not going to be in vain, man. Man. Uh the last scripture I want to get just to kind of prove these points is 2 Corinthians 13 and 8. Mm -hmm. Whoever got 2 Corinthians 13 and 8, you want to grab that real quick? Can I get a precept? Yeah, read your precept first and then we'll get that last. Okay. This is uh, Habakkuk chapter, let's see, where am I at? Chapter 2, verse 1. It says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me. And what I shall answer when I'm uh, what I am reproved. And that's exactly what we've been given, man. We've been given the vision of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai to know what's to come. And we're watching the city. We know the destruction is coming, it's coming of the Lord. But you know, as far as the uh as far as the 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 vision, like I said, it's been given unto the prophets, like the brother said, man, a watchman. Prophets, they're synonymous, you know. Right, and we're not watching in vain. Just mm -hmm. to back up Psalms 127, because mm -hmm. the will of the Lord is being done. It's going to be fulfilled. The word of the Lord doesn't return void, pursuant to Isaiah 55 and 11, you know. Because a lot of people think we're watching and sounding the alarm, talking about the RFID microchip, all these different prophecies. They think that we're watching in vain. But the will of the Heavenly Father is being perfected on the earth as we know it. Mm -hmm. But, like, we just, I don't know if you read it, it says... The, the uh, not yet. Yeah, continue on. Con. Uh, I'll drop down to verse three. Uh -huh. Habakkuk two and three says, "For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak, right, and not lie, and not lie." So Man. everything that the Most High, uh, that He uh, wrote in His will, that He uh, uh, sent His messengers, His prophets to speak on, is going to come to pass, man. Right. And we're at the end. We're at the at the final stage. Right. Go ahead. This is uh, 1 Chronicles 28, verse 10. Uh, this, it says, Take heed now, for Yahweh has chosen thee to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. Now, this is the time of uh, uh, King David was kind of uh, prepping King Solomon. But it, it, it goes, you know, that could be uh, provided on what's going on today. You know, because, like I say, the temple is, is through us now. That's right. You know, and, and he said, be strong and do it. So that's what we're doing. If, if it wasn't the, the work of the Lord, it would fizzle out. Right. Yet you see this train is getting stronger and more powerful, you know? That's right. It's like a juggernaut, man. Right, right. Like the more uh, people try to hinder it, it's really uh, giving us more exposure, man. Mm -hmm. Which really among that exposure is the believers that's going to come into the faith, man. Mm -hmm. To make the will of the Heavenly Father come to pass that much more quicker. And that sets up the, my last play, unless anybody had anything else. Yeah, I'll say the Lord prayed for the apostles' fruit to remain. Right. And that remaining fruit is a hindrance to this kingdom. Right. You got it. So whatever these people are doing, man, to try to stop this word is making it gain even more power. That's right. Man. That's the beauty of, of doing what we're doing, man. God. <laughs> it's, your arms are too short to box with the most high. How about Shem Yahweh Shah? Mm -hmm. like, like we read in uh, Acts 5 and 38, it says, Lest ye be happily or ignorantly be found to fight against the Most High. Like, you trying to fight a battle that you can never win. Trying Go ahead. Empty, trying to empty out the ocean with the baby spoon. You really helping our cause, really. So, Vocab's really doing his job, but it's still, he's the demon. He, he kind of makes you feel a certain way, but at the same time, <laughs> when you get everything in perspective, he's really doing a great job. You know, he's giving us more, uh, more gas, more steam. You know? Go, go ahead, 2 Corinthians 13 and 8. Man, I was just... That's the spirit. I was literally thinking about that scripture for a precept. But yeah, that's the last that's one I, I want to get that I had. Here. I Go ahead, brother. 
2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 8. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Right. For we can do nothing against the truth before the truth, man. So, <laughs> all of these gainsayers, people trying to slander us, uh, trying to twist up our words, trying to twist up the doctrine, trying to uh, basically uh, keep uh, people from tuning in to our videos. That's making this word gain more exposure, man. That's why you had uh, Eve on the plane cursing out every damn body, man. <laughs> now, she probably ain't got the 100% doctrine, but she's still pushing that vibration, Jacob and Esau. Yeah. To where uh, 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 one of the true believers might say, who, who is that? Right. I ain't never heard of that in the Bible. You know? I'm going right. to look it up. So whatever these people do, even Vocab Malone making all these different videos, Fruit of the Elect is going to come from watching his video probably. Let me check out these guys that he's talking about, that he's so infatuated with. Because really, he has an infatuation towards us, man. You know? His whole movement is centered around us, man. But it's nothing that he... Man, read that again, Bob Kishon. Man. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 8. But we can do nothing against the truth before the truth. Right. So knowing that right there, that really should increase your level of faith and hope in the Lord, man. Regardless of our circumstances and all of the different temptations and the adversities that we go through, man, there's nothing that these people can do against this truth, man. But only for the truth. You're actually helping the will of the Heavenly Father come to pass even quicker. That's right. You know, either you're going to line up to be one of those that's called into the faith to be saved, or you're going to be condemned. You're going to die, man. Go ahead. I want to say, uh, you know, Vocab like the Jacob on Aquaman, the Black Mantle. And they asked him, hey, you know, first he was doing it for money and things like that. And he got to a point, he just got so obsessed with it. He was like, forget that. I, I just I just want to take him back. Right. You know, so that's, you know, like I say, Vocab, he ain't got to a point now. He's just so obsessed mm -hmm. where no matter what, I want to I wanna take him down some kind of way. Right. He has a know. creepy obsession with us, man. A grown damn man has obsessions with other men. You know, it's kind of homoerotic at the same time, but that's another topic for another day. <laughs> okay. well, I got one more note Go ahead, right? First Thessalonians 4, 8. He therefore that despiseth despiseth another man, but the most high, who have also given us the Holy Spirit. Mm. He got you? Got you. Okay. Nah, nice. I got no. Go ahead, oh, This is what you mentioned earlier. I had already got it when you had Yeah, yeah, that's cool. This uh Acts chapter 5 and verse 38. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. But it, like like Bocat, man, he he's in his life, man. Hey, y'all watching how shots controlling him to the angels to do what he's doing against the truth, man. That's right. He only gonna make it more famous. That's right. All right. Middle of verse thirty-eight. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. So Vocab is really giving us free promotion, man. Hey. You know, he's a servant of the Lord on the left hand side. How be it? But hey. Like Nebuchadnezzar was a servant of the Lord. You take what you can get out of these demons, man. Because really, he's uh, going to be a, a slave in the kingdom anyway, so he's getting a head start on working yep. for us, really. Yep. That's right, brother. Ooh, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting a head start, man. <laughs> Think about it. Let that penetrate. But he ain't even considering it, though, man. Right. Mm -hmm. right. He working hard for this truth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the spirit that that actually came out again, you know, but unless anybody had anything else, that's pretty much all the scriptures that I had. So if that's it, want to give all praises to double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught us peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. With that, Shalom. Shalom.